I have a ton of devices that need to be charged constantly between game controllers, camera batteries, microphones, uh, stuff like this, microscope, I've got flashlights, tons of stuff. And my big issue with that is sometimes I need to charge a lot of these devices at the same time. Now it doesn't matter how fast they charge, I can plug them in overnight, but if I need them first thing in the morning, they do all need to be charged. So I hope to solve this problem in this video for myself and maybe for you. And the way I aim to solve it is with a PCB from PCB Way. And so here are the PCBs and here are all the parts. Um, very simple, it's going to use a computer power supply uh, through the 24 pin connector and a switch to turn it on and then it'll feed into these dual USB sockets. So let me put this together and then I'll give you a little walk around. Well, let's talk features about this thing. Uh, first and foremost, this is powered by a, a computer power supply. And the reason why I chose computer power supply to um, power this thing is that they are ubiquitous. You can find a very high current computer power supply uh, for not much money on Amazon. And you can find them used all over the place. And the build quality of even a really cheap computer power supply rivals that of uh, mid-tier USB power bricks. So don't worry about that. Next thing is that not only have I fused the 5 volt, 5 volt rail that goes to all of these double USB sockets, but I've actually broken out and fused all of the other rails uh, except for the weird rail only used in uh, retro systems uh, much to another maker's chagrin. So um, the point is that you have these uh, pads here that you can take off all of the voltages afforded to you by your power supply in order to expand this board into more modules. Another thing you can do is there's the, a 5 volt standby rail which delivers less current uh, than the regular 5 volt rail but will work when this switch is switched off and you can take that off and build another one of these boards with a whole bunch of these ports. Next thing is you have a on off switch there, but on the back side and actually through the board, there are some remote mounting locations. So you can just tie this into a switch on a 3D printed case, for example. And same thing with the LED. I put the LED, which is the, the power status indicator. Um, I've just mounted it up on standoffs here, or just as high as it goes, so that I can mount it into a case as well. And I have an adjustable resistor here. Uh, this one is a 10K. It is a 10K. Uh, and that means I can adjust the brightness of this LED. If you're going to use this in a dark room, like a bedroom, where you want to charge all your stuff without leaving your lithium batteries unattended, uh, you can drop the brightness of the LED and you can actually have it off if you want because that's important to me, might be important to you. And also, uh, it also gives you the freedom of the color that, you, that you're that you going to pick for your LED. Uh, next thing is these fuses are automotive fuses. So you can literally pick up replacement fuses at the dollar store if you would like. And on top of that, I found it was very important for me to be able to charge multiple items. So as you can see, I have 12 USB ports accessible. So you can charge 12 things all at once. So let me put the fuses in and let's take, the, take this thing out for a test drive. Everything is very slightly tenuous here, but um, we still need to give this thing a spin. And um, I have taken a quick look at the connections. Doesn't look like anything is shorted, um, but my eyesight is not what it used to be. So there could be some magic smoke. We'll see. Um, so this is the power supply I'm going to be using. This is a very inexpensive uh, thermal take 600 watt um, power supply. And the reason uh, that these things work great for little chargers like this is look, you get 17 amps at five volts plus an additional 2.5 amps at the five volt standby. So that's pretty good. You also, if you need the 3.3 volt rail, you get 12, uh, 22 amps and the 12 uh, volt rail, you get 42 amps. So that's why I broke it out here to use this as a base and then expand out of here. Uh, in the future, I might just make, replace this connector with 
you know, a Molex connector if you only want the 12 and the 5 volts. If you want that version made, let me know in the comments because I could make it happen. I do have the parts. So moving this aside now, um, I will turn on the power supply and then we should be able to get going. To test this, of course, I'm going to be using this electronic load. I also have this little guy uh, because I just want to see what happens if I plug this in at the 2 amp draw mode on another plug to see if it affects the voltage over here. Uh, so I'm going to plug this in here because it's just easier to do it now than to mess with it later. Plug in like that and plug in like that. And these are all the way down. Well, I'll turn on the power supply and hopefully no magic smoke comes out. So far so good. Okay. I'm going to flip this on. LED is on. Fan is blowing. We've got 5.18 volts uh, all through the USB cable here. And I'm just going to turn the course adjustment. Oh boy, we're dropping voltage quite quickly here. So there must be a lot of loss. I haven't tested these cables for their quality yet, but we can tell if it's through the uh, the whole shebang or not. If I plug this guy uh, into another plug and this stays stable, that means that really what's happening is that I'm losing it through this connector, through this wire, or through this device here. Let's see. Plugging that in, and yeah, the voltage did not change here. So we are just dropping uh, voltage through these connectors, which is not fantastic, but not the end of the world. Yeah, this is heating up. I'm going to pick another USB plug just in case that's the deal. No, 4.59. So yeah, it isn't great for a couple amps of current. I mean, pushing it up here, two and a half, three amps, uh, and we have four volts only. Wish I would know where the heating is happening. Obviously, this is getting hot, because this is at two amps. Is it my fuse? Everything feels kind of ice cold. So, I mean, let's crank it up. Yeah, at 4 amps, we're at three, 375, uh, 3.75 volts. Could be my USB connector. Oh, that's going to be too hot to pull out pretty soon. Let me pull it out now. And yeah, it doesn't really change my voltage here. Oh boy, this thing is really hot. So let me grab another USB connector and we'll try this again. Let's try it this way. Uh, now I have voltage detection on both ends and I have my relatively higher end cable that tested really well in my test. So we're going to get to see if the voltage coming in here is the problem or the voltage through the cable is the problem. And so if I'm pulling 3 amps on there, this is saying 4.1 and this is saying 4.88 so this one is just barely within the USB specs at uh, two and a half amps and this one here is outside of USB specs so really what is happening here is it's a combination of things it's you know the USB connector here uh, the cable the USB connector there etc I don't know what happens if we ramp this up quite a bit though see now this is failing so there is a voltage drop somewhere it's not perfect, but this is not really meant to charge um, one thing at very high current. This thing is meant to charge 12 things at relatively low current. And again, I can pull, you know, one and a half amps on that, and then two amps over here. And the two are independent of each other. See that voltage doesn't change with one and then the other. And that's kind of the goal. This thing will be able to provide, the, the power supply will be able to provide a lot of current at five, uh, at 5 volts. And that's kind of the point here. And when I flip this, 
it affects it just barely. A couple of millivolts, like literally three millivolts is what it changed. So that's not bad at all. Uh, 30 millivolts. That's not bad at all. And here I'm reading 1.52 amps and here I'm reading 1.62 amps. So yeah, this is not the proper test for this. The proper test would be to char charge 12 things at once, but I mean, as you can see, it's gonna do the job just fine. This one here is heating up like crazy, pulling two amps, and uh, this one here is pulling an amp and a half, and I'm sure I can plug a whole bunch of things and charge them all. All right, well, let's try this again, uh, this time with hard wires to the uh, five volt and ground test points there. Don't think they're shorted. We're about to find out. So okay, 5.2 volts here. We're at 2 amps. We're at nearly 5.5 amps before uh, we just don't have enough uh, voltage for a USB spec, but it'll keep going up. Stuff will still charge at that. We're really cranking up here at nearly 8 amps. Oh, 8.6 amps, 4.6 volts, and don't forget there is a voltage drop around here, around these uh, cables here, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, we should have 17 amps available to us, and there's 10 amps, that's the max I can do on this uh, electronic load. But we can actually check the uh, voltage that the board is providing. And so, let's see if we can do this without shorting anything. 4.792, so we're dropping just a little bit, but we're still within USB spec uh, charging at um, nearly 10 amps. I don't know if you guys could see that or not. There we go, 4.8, uh, I think, actually 4.85 would be within spec, so this is very damn close and we're pulling 10 amps you know through these uh, test pads which is actually pretty dang good um, anything in here getting hot no not quite I believe the red is um, the red wire I, I think the red wire is 5 volts or it could be orange I'm not sure but uh, let's let's see if we can test right at the connector yeah 4.8 uh, 876 coming in at the connector so this thing is keeping up um, now I have heard before that you that you need the 12 volt rail to have a little bit of a load to keep more accurate um, keep more accurate voltage on the 5 volt yeah because I can see the 12 volt is at 13 volts and don't forget we still have the 5 volt standby which is at uh, 5.123 volts so that's not bad at all. These wires are getting a little little soft, a little warm. But yeah, this thing is more than capable. And don't forget that uh, when you charge lithium batteries, as the voltage climbs inside the lithium cell, um, so does the current drops, especially when you top out and you're just in top off mode. So I do expect to be able to charge 12 devices at once if I so choose. But the most important part is, um, even if this drops a little bit further down, it's still distributed along among all these uh, plugs, and we're going to be perfectly fine for charging dumb things like ca camera batteries, GoPro batteries, uh, flashlights, uh, TP4057 modules, and stuff like that. So yeah, this is um, my electronic, my or my 12 device uh, charger with room for expansion uh, using these uh, breakouts here to uh, get more voltage and more current out of it. I also have plans to expand uh, and make a different board using uh, a Molex lead. And so theoretically, if it was using a Molex lead, you could just run one out of your computer case because how many devices use Molex these days? But yeah, everything here is subject to opinion, so let me know in the comments below if that's the kind of thing you want to see. 
If you want to build one of these boards, don't forget in the description below, that's where you're going to find uh, the files on PCBWay and my affiliate links for all of the parts. Thanks for watching.